Now I've also found quite a bit of microprocessor support uh, chips. The Motorola MC6850 is a UART. Um, I'm not sure what the 685, oh that's another 6850, 6810, uh, what else have we got? Oh yeah, this one is 6852. I've got a feeling that might be a synchronous uh, receiver transmitter, whereas the 6850 is a asynchronous receiver transmitter, so standard uh, serial board chip. This one is for um, other protocols. Let's have a quick look at that, 6852. So yes, the 6852 is a synchronous serial data adapter, what they call an SSDA. The 6850 is a UART, which is a universal asynchronous uh, receiver transmitter. Uh, there are a couple of 6821 chips here, which are parallel input-output ports. I think two 8-bit ports per chip with various handshake. So this would be for the uh, 6800 or 6802 or even 6809, I guess. CPUs and then there's a Z80 PIO again a parallel input output uh, I think two 8-bit ports for the Zilog Z80A although there's no Z80A CPU in this box uh, There's a Z80A SIO serial input output uh, chip here So it's kind of a Z80 form version of the UART and then this odd thing this G65 SC22 Which I had to look up which is called a VIA a versatile interface adapter again it's just got parallel uh, ports I think two 8-bit ports uh, some counter timers in here the sort of stuff you'd expect in microcontrollers these days but with the old microprocessors you had to buy an external chip to provide that functionality now we've got a few other bits and pieces on here including some of these sort of uh, tall tin can things uh, this one here with lots of wires sticking out the bottom which are just uh, relays. There's a rather nice um, seven segment display with integral driver chip here. Uh, this one is an eight pin one, uh, Hewlett Packard. So it has both the, the LEDs and the uh, decoder driver chip in there. Um, here are a series of PALs. Uh, this one is a PAL 20L10. So this is programmable array logic. There were PALs and GALs around at the time. I think these are kind of the forerunners of the FPGAs. Um, these ZN428s are 8-bit uh, digital to analog converters. Um, and the 427 is a successive approximation register. So combined with the 428, you could build an analog to digital converter um, using that and some sort of sample and hold circuit. Got a nice old uh, CMOS thing here, a 4020 with a ceramic uh, package with a soldered on metallic lid. Some dynamic RAMs here, 4164. Also, someone's put an X on these, so I'm guessing that uh, they don't work anymore. Interesting, there's an, a 54HCT, which is quite a late edition logic family, the HCT family in a ceramic package with a soldered on metal lid. That must have been quite expensive, I would imagine, at the time. And there's a fair old selection of uh, eight pin devices in here, including uh, the LP2951, which I think is the uh, eight pin dip version of the 2950 uh, LDO regulator. OPPO7 is an op amp, uh, LM310, and uh, what else have we got? LM311, I can't remember whether they're op amps or comparators, something like that. Um, now there are some interesting ones. These 75452 are dual either AND or OR gates with driver transistors. It's an odd thing, I've never seen them before. So yeah, these, uh, these things, these dual peripheral drivers, uh, there are three types marked here, the 451 is NAND gates, uh, two dual in, two input NAND gates with transistors on the back end of them, or you could have AND gates in the uh, 452, or you can have NOR gates in the uh, 75453 version. Strange things. I mean, I imagine they're quite useful, but I've just never seen them before. And uh, since you did ask, Derek, these um, MEDL products, these MCT1487s, um, which are in a very interesting package. Let's just have a quick look at one. It's a sort of um, 
silver metallic uh, thing with uh, pins sticking out the bottom, some sort of hybrid package. They're just um, serial line drivers and line receivers. Um, they're not very interesting, quite frankly. So now I want to set myself the challenge of getting one of these chips to actually uh, work. So I've decided to pick this rather odd thing. Um, it's called a 9357-7447. It's dated 1972, uh, so it's about 45 years old. No, not quite that old, about 43 years old. Um, it's basically a 7447, which is a seven-segment uh, display decoder, but it's of a slightly different family, this 9357. Let's take a look at the datasheet for that. So I found the datasheet for this, uh, the 9357-7447. It is a BCD, binary coded decimal to seven segment decoder driver for common anode displays. Fortunately, I found a common anode display. Um, it, it's essentially the same as the 7447. It's purely combinational. You take uh, four inputs here, fully decode them to, to give you your seven segment outputs. There's some blanking and uh, segment test circuitry here. But uh, essentially what we want to do is put four bit count in here and then watch the numbers count up on the display uh, decoded by this chip. Now I was going to use this 74122 uh, monostable multivibrator as a clock source, but actually thinking about that, I don't think that's going to work. Also, it's really suffered because um, it's been in some foam, a bit like these chips, and it seems to have reacted with the foam. Now, I've no idea what this FCH211 is, but you can see it's all rusty, and it just has sort of coagulated with the foam. So it's just a big mess, and um, the rust has gone to got to it, and I think uh, these chips have pretty much had it. Well, this um, LS122, was it? Yes. Uh, one of the pins kind of broke while I was trying to clean them up. Fortunately, that is a not connected pin, so it doesn't matter too much. But I think I'd have so much trouble with this. Uh, I'm also not sure if I can re-trigger it to turn it into an A-stable multivibrator. I think I'm just going to use a 555. Uh, so, 555 circuit, pin 2 to pin 6 for A-stable mode, oscillator mode in other words. Uh, capacitor here, just shoved in any value. 100k resistor. Now I can't tell if this LED is oscillating or switching on and off, but if I vary the pot, it does vary in brightness, so I assume it is. So I need to now feed the output of the 555 to this LS393 eight stage divider, and uh, out, out the back of that, we should see the LED flashing on and off, I would guess. Well, now I've got the 555 output going through the eight stage divider, but the flashing sequence is really weird so something funny is going on there so I'm just going to put this big capacitor across the power lines oh yes that's fixed it so we're getting a nice steady slow count should be able to vary the speed of that that seems to be slower and that seems to be faster so that's good so now we can feed that into this um, 7447 decoder which I've noticed is getting quite hot. Not sure why that is, but anyway, I'll press on. So there are the uh, slowest changing, or what you might call the most significant uh, divided outputs from the 393 going into the binary inputs of the 7447. Now I need to take the uh, seven segment outputs, which I think are all along this top here, run them through this uh, 220 ohm dual in line 8 resistor pack and then feed them into the 7 segment display. Let's do that now. So I need to make up a few uh, interconnecting wires here for the 7 segments to go to the resistors and then on to the display. Now can you believe I cannot find a proper data sheet for this uh, LTS3401 I'm rushing a bit probably, but I think I found the uh, common anode connection there, which goes to uh, VCC. And I'm just going to try and find all the segments pretty much by trial and error. Um, I've obviously found one of them and it's uh, doing a flashing sequence. So let's continue the process. 
Well, it's working, but um, it's going very fast, so I'm going to find a bigger capacitor to slow the 555 down. I can't get much lower on the pot. Let's do that. And uh, that seems to be it. It's going through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then arbitrary characters for A to F, because this chip, in common with the 7447, doesn't decode uh, the numbers 10 to 15, which are A to, de A to F hexadecimal. Let's just have another look at the 7447 data sheet. So yeah, here's the data sheet for this 9357 stroke 7447. You've got the numbers 0 through 9, then you've got this little lowercase c, same thing backwards, uh, sort of upper u. It's just stuff that's not properly decoded by the circuit. Um, and we're getting the same thing on my thing. Let me just bring that up in front of the monitor. So you've got the little c's and the u's and the sort of half s and the lowercase t. But yeah, that seems to be decoding uh, 0 through 9 perfectly well. And then those other symbols also being decoded. Now I've also got a theory about why this chip's getting warm. This decoder chip is a ceramic chip. It's actually really hot. It's, it's really quite hot, that chip. And I think it's just because it's not LS. It's not low power shock key. This is original... TTL, um, the power per individual gate, and there are a lot of gates in this chip, it was, um, I can't remember, about 10 milliwatts or something, so this is putting out lots and lots of watts. This is an MSI chip, medium scale integration, it's not just four gates. This has probably pushing 100 gates in it, so yeah, that's getting pretty warm, non-LS TTL, but as you can see, it works perfectly well after, uh, well, from 1972 to 2015, so uh, 43 years, still going strong. That's brilliant. So thanks once again to uh, Derek for sending me this massive box of chips. And uh, yes, we've actually got one of them, one of the oldest ones in here actually, fired up, running, and doing something logical. Cheerio.